Now we'll consider the muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm. First, looking at the pronator teres muscle. The pronator teres muscle has an origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and on the medial side of the ulna and inserts on the lateral side of the midshaft of the radius. The pronator teres, as its name implies, is a pronator of the forearm. The flexor carpi radialis muscle has an origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and inserts at the bases of metacarpals two and three. The flexor carpi radialis is a flexor and abductor of the wrist. Here we are looking at the anterior compartment again from the other side. Here is the flexor carpi radialis muscle, which we spoke about. And this muscle over here is the palmaris longus muscle. The palmaris longus muscle has an origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and inserts on the palmar aponeurosis. The palmaris longus is a flexor of the wrist. In this model, we can remove the pronator teres, the proximal end of the flexor carpi radialis, and the proximal end of the palmaris longus. To reveal the muscle of the intermediate layer, which is the flexor digitorum superficialis. This muscle has an origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and also on the radius and the ulna. Distally, this muscle divides into four tendons, which insert on the middle phalanges of digits two, three, four, and five. The flexor digitorum superficialis flexes at the wrist joint and also at the metacarpophalangeal joint over here and the proximal interphalangeal joints of digits two, three, four, and five. Here is a reverse view of the forearm and the last muscle we'll talk about in the anterior compartment where the flexors are found is the flexor carpi ulnaris. The flexor carpi ulnaris also has an origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and on the ulna and it inserts on the pisiform bone and then way, by way of ligaments onto the hamate and metacarpal five. The flexor carpi ulnaris flexes and adducts the wrist.